All right, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to the channel. We're gonna do pretty much a two-year update slash go over of our solar system for our off-grid cabin and try to give you some useful information and maybe you'll learn a thing or two. First off, I'm not a professional. I have no background in solar prior to the last couple years. What we've done here has treated us pretty good for the last couple years and I'd like to share it with you and maybe it'll help somebody. Maybe it'll help you. What we've done, I think, would work well for 90% of people where electricity can't reach. Stay off the uh, utility systems and be independent. Our solar system is a good setup, and I would recommend you do a little more research, but this could be part of that research. And a lot of the solar videos you see out there are people giving you reviews and specs, intricate stuff, which is very important to solar in itself, but they're in, like, an office or at a desk or in a warehouse. So I want to give you some practical tips and help you out a little bit if I can. And now that I have a couple years of a solar experience, I feel like I can do that. So let's get to it, guys. These 100 watt Renogy solar panels, they've been great panels. They do produce very well. The reason we started with these is when we did start, it was during a time of shortage and all the larger panels were unavailable. And these, I could buy a few at a time and it was very affordable. And there was no like, I have to buy a pallet of them for $3,000, but I get a great deal. <laughs> and pay for you know heavy shipping uh w these panels came out to be about 100 bucks a piece comes out to about a dollar a watt i like the idea of having these smaller panels because if i were to fling a rock or have something fall on one of the panels then i ruin a 100 dollars panel not a 500 dollars panel so or if one malfunctions and we get a short in one i still have nine others to rely on so far, I would recommend them highly. I've been using them heavily for three years. A couple of them I used uh, for a little longer because we had a small system set up prior to going this route. So right next to my solar array is my solar shed. This is where I hold all my equipment at. I'm gonna show it all to you here in just a second. We are in Northern Michigan. We have a lot of freezing temperatures. We use AGM batteries because they are sealed lead acid batteries that will not freeze in the winter time and can charge in the cold unlike the new lithium iron phosphate type batteries. We've found minimal reasons to make any improvements. The only thing that we have changed more recently is we added a secondary solar array. This is primarily going to help us in the winter time. What this is going to do is one, double our solar panel wattage. We have 1000 watts here. That's 1200 watts on this array here. This solar array over here, because it can track the sun, will follow the sun and produce around a thousand watts for eight to 10 hours a day, as opposed to our old stationary system only produces about eight or 900 watts for a short part of the day, only maybe a couple hours because the sun's in an ideal position, whereas the tracking system follows it. So guys, this bottom array is paralleled on the other side. This is my negative for the whole array. Spins up under here, goes into the solar shed. Here's my positive. Um, I have a two, two to one splitter here. It's hard to see because it won't pull out any farther. Two to one. There's an inline fuse in here that runs around through here and to our charge controller. Being set up this way and having that inline fuse allows me to not need any fancy DC breaker boxes or connect, you know, uh, joiner boxes, anything like that. So I'm eliminating, you know, cost, keeping the cost down, which is a big important thing for us here at Off Grid with J and Jen. And I think most people that want to have a simple solar setup or an off for an off-grid cabin, hunting camp, or being a nomad traveling around. So keeping the cost down is always important, but we don't want to do it at the cost of safety. That being said, you can have quite a bit of power and stored energy without spending tens of thousands of dollars. So we'll get to that in a little bit. We'll get to the uh, cost aspect of things and we'll show you how we can run our off-grid cabin and have minimal costs involved. So guys, we also did not invest a huge amount of money in our racking system. We simply built us a woodshed. Uh, you could put it on the roof of a cabin or you could put it on the roof of a, a racking system made specifically for it. But we had to build a woodshed anyway. We had to build a solar array uh, either way. So we just combined the two, made useful space of it. Three 12 foot two by eights. 
and then some cross members with two by fours. That's it. And we made it to the size of the, the 10 panel array. I didn't even ever, I never really pinned them down or nothing. I just set them in here and they kind of sit on each other and hold each other. These have been sitting in here for over two years. We have a lot of wind up here. We have a lot of storms. We've had trees blow down. We've had tornadoes in the area and they haven't moved. There's no wind going to get underneath this and blow it up unless it's a hurricane or tornado that hits you directly and then your stuff's gone anyway it doesn't really matter simple setup you know we have fifty dollars in the lumber to uh mount it and some bolts to mount it to the solar shed and we're good to go woodshed solar array combo so guys the power comes in these 10 gauge wires that are just regular standard mc4 wires that you get uh, when you buy extensions and stuff pv rated you know uv rated so it could be out in the sun but i have these just running right over here to the positive and negative of our charge controller. That runs up to our MT50 topside control, tells you everything you really need to know and lets you change your type of batteries and our voltages and stuff. Now our MPPT charge controller has worked well for us, knock on wood, uh, flawlessly without any issues. So after the MPPT charge controller uh, takes that voltage from the solar panels and turns it into useful power for us in the right voltages, it comes out here, goes to a 150 amp fuse, and then goes through our 2 watt copper wire. All right, guys, so when we started this cabin, we started super simple. Again, I have a playlist of those videos. If you'd like to check it out, it's uh, on our channel, on our video list and playlist. I started with just one deep cycle battery. Like, you should probably start two just to learn. It provided us with lights. If that's all you're looking for off-grid or at your cabin or what, wherever you're trying to do this at, one battery, a couple solar panels, you're good to go. So here is our Gandel pure sine wave inverter. Most of them have a couple plugs on them in order to get this where we lug it in we had to jump up to a 3000 watt now we probably lose a little bit of efficiency having a larger inverter like that when we only ever max use 2000 watts if you don't need a battery bank this size then you don't need to go this big but just find out what your needs are guys we could run our cabin with just lights and stuff on a single car battery but because we both use the computer quite often and lights and we want a refrigeration and we didn't want to worry about it all the time we built this battery bank the way it is and the way it is will run us for about three or four days so guys although our power system our solar power is working great for our cabin and has been for the last couple of years we are using older technology things have come a long ways in the last couple of years that being said that's going to lead us to the sponsor of this video anchor solix uh, we've worked with them quite a bit. I'd like to tell you about the new Anchor Solix F3800. It has 3,840 watt hours of EV class life PL4 batteries. Anchor Solix F3800 is designed with InfiniPower. It is long lasting, 3,000 life cycles, and designed to use daily for 10 years. It's got a massive 6,000 watt power inverter that can easily run multiple heavy duty appliances in your home. One of the new innovations with the F3800 from Anchor Solix is their new bi-directional inverter. You can run 240 volt on one unit, saving you thousands from having to buy two units and pair them together. This makes the Anchor Solix F3800 a perfect option for home backup system in case of an emergency or grid down situation. So if 3800 watts of Life PO4 batteries isn't enough, you can expand the unit with another six additional batteries, giving you over 26,000 watt hours of capacity. That can run the typical home for about a week. So the Anchor Solix F3800 is designed to be the most accessible home power system available. It takes minimal setup and it gives you home-like power anywhere. You can charge the unit in under two hours with 2,400 watts of solar power. Or hook it up to an AC plug and you can charge it in under two and a half hours. If you're looking for a home backup system or something for your cabin that you can have home-like power, check out the Anchor Solix F3800. It's on a Kickstarter program right now. Click it by early so you can get up to 45% off. The earlier you sign up, the greater the discounts. So check it out. The links are in the description box below in the first pinned comment. Thanks for letting me tell you about the Anchor Solix F3800. Again, check out the links in the description box below to get your own and sign up. All right, everybody, let's fast forward a couple months from the first half of this video. I'm not sure exactly where we left off uh, when I was showing you the equipment. I kind of realized I was going to make some altercations to the system or some additions uh, since 
I started that half of the video, the first half. Uh, we talked about our you know original array and our secondary array. Our secondary array is now hooked up. We don't need a full sun, cloudless day to get charging now. Uh, we get three, 400 watts between the two arrays, even on a very cloudy, overcast day. And that's enough to charge the solar bank and uh, fulfill our daily needs. Let me do the real quick, uh, how much everything costs. 10 100 watt panels, adding up to 1000 watts, uh, $1,000. Secondary array, uh, this system in, in its entirety with the tracking system and the panels is like sixteen or $1,700. I think that's pretty fair considering its capabilities. Uh, you could buy just the tracking system and put your own panels on it, but you have to check the dimensions on their site. We have eight Renogy 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries wired in series parallel. We have $1,200 into these batteries. They are now, I think, around 200 bucks a piece. So you would have obviously 1600 now. They are AGM, so they're sealed lead acid batteries. So there's no maintenance. That's why I got these. Our Gandel 3000 watt inverter, 24 volt inverter was around $450. Charge controller uh, by ePever. It's a 40 amp charge controller. That was around $220. Comes with the MT50 top side here that gives you all your information about what's coming in through your array and your battery status. More recently, like I said, we hooked up this second array, ran wires over here to this fairly inexpensive $150 Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller. Both of these are MPPT. So 150 bucks for this one. This is only takes 100 volts as opposed to this one takes 150 volts. So it's a little more expensive for this one. This one, I should have got probably another one of these, but I was trying to keep this extra system inexpensive. Uh, wiring, breakers, all that stuff. Uh, we have about $700 into all the wiring crimps, the tools to crimp everything. I bought uh, MC4 building kit so you can make your own MC4 connections and stuff like that. I didn't go cheap. Um, I bought a bunch of stuff uh, just so I had it. We're out here in the woods. I didn't want to run the town all the time. So I made a big order around $700 worth of uh, wiring crimps and tools to use that stuff. So and fuses and bus bars. It adds up, but you can get away with a system like this, guys, and power everything in your cabin. So we're going to head into the cabin and I'm going to show you what we run. All right, guys, here's our cabin. Welcome to our cabin, 16 by 24. Uh, it's not finished yet. Everything's, you know, still needs a little bit of work. But uh, so here's our kitchen. All right, we obviously have propane stove, so you don't have any electricity needs there. You can make coffee in a percolator, right? Well, we have this thermos style Black & Decker coffee maker. Uh, it What it does is it, perks the coffee, puts it in the thermos, and then it stays hot in there without continuing to run. This eliminates that warmer tray and just keeps it warm in a thermos style mug. So that's pretty cool, 700 watts there. We draw that, no problem. Here's one of the biggest scams I feel like in the off-grid solar world is fridges. You could spend two to $3,000 on a fridge that's straight 12 volt or propane. Okay, straight 12 volts, probably the best way to do it because you know, you're eliminating the conversion from AC to DC to run your compressor, but those fridges are expensive and I'm not sure you can run a big fridge on 12 volt. I think the biggest you could do would be like a dorm style mini fridge. This is a 10 cubic foot fridge uh, from one of the big box stores. It runs about 170 watts. That's it, 170 watts but it doesn't run 24 seven. All the appliances today are very efficient. So the off-grid solar fridge market has kind of used trickery in teaching you that you need a high efficiency fridge for your off-grid cabin when they're already pretty efficient. They're way more efficient compared to fridges uh, 20 years ago. So that two to $3,000 that we saved by just buying a standard 10 cubic foot fridge, this fridge was $330. It's made by a magic chef, but $330 fridge as opposed to a two to $3,000 fridge. Now, even if you buy a two to $3,000 fridge and run on a propane, 
you're going to be paying for propane. I think those use about 20 pounds of propane every two to three weeks, I've heard other off-gridders say. Well, that's 20 bucks. That's 25, 30 bucks a month if you uh, do that. You know, one and a half uh, 20 pound propanes, that's 30 bucks a month. That's a dollar a day. $365 a year to run a propane fridge. And uh, I don't, you know, I'm sure they're safe, but there's exhaust problems and then worry about fire and this and that. This is $330 fridge bought at the big box store right around, you know, 20 miles from here. Uh, and it draws very little electricity. We spent a little bit extra money on batteries to store capacity, you know, storage capacity. Instead, we spent that money on our solar than a fancy fridge. So don't let the uh, solar fridge market scam you and make you think you need to spend two to $3,000 on a fridge. Uh, you can spend 300 bucks. Pretty cool. Three watt bulbs, so nine watts, nine watts, nine watts, 27 watts when these are on. 27 watts, nothing guys. In case I missed telling you, our whole cabin is run in AC power. Uh, we have it uh, wired just like a typical house in the city. People bounce back and forth and use different voltage stuff to help with conversion losses. When you convert from 12 volt, 24 volt to AC, and then AC back to DC, like in fridges and for compressors and stuff, um, you have losses. But in my experience, those losses are not worth all the extra headaches you have of having multiple systems in your cabin. Um, I mean, I was so intimidated by solar because people were using AC current, DC current, 24 volt, 12 volt, uh, every appliance. And then when you do appliances and stuff that's in 12 volt or DC current, most of those appliances are more expensive. Again, just like a fridge, a 12 volt fridge or propane fridge. Everything's 10 times the price because <laughs> because it's special. This typical AC fridge runs no problem. I don't think you're going to have 10% loss by converting it back and forth or 5 to 10%. Buy an extra battery. Buy an extra solar panel. Make up for them losses that way. We have a, a ceiling fan here that runs like 10 watts for the light and I think 40 or 50 watts for the fan. I think it's less than that. It says 15 watts, but I can't believe it's only 15 watts to run that fan. But I'm going to estimate it at double that because it's a motor. So it's running. And that's just my estimate. So we use that a lot in the winter time uh, to push the hot air down from the ceiling into this area. Another thing that drains a significant amount of energy is laptops. 60 watts plugged into the wall all the time. 60 watts. And there's two of them because Jenny works online. I edit videos for you guys and make videos. So there's 120 watts for just our laptops. Here's our bathroom fan. Obviously we only run that when we're taking a shower to pump the moisture out of here. Uh, 20, probably 20, probably less than 20 watt LED light. We have these lights over here too. Those are nine watts a piece, 18. So it's nice and bright in here. You know, lamps and lights. If we had every light in our cabin on, let me add it up real quick here. 20, 30, 40, 45, 50, plus 27, 77, plus that. So if we had every light in the cabin on, it's less than 100 watts. Less than 100 watt bulb, you know, like the old school incandescent lights. Uh, less than one 100 watt incandescent light from years ago. We can have every light, and we never have every light on in the cabin. So I wanted to really get my point across about this fridge. I am super impressed and super happy about this. Off grid, the biggest deal is refrigeration. Uh, you can't live out of a cooler. You can do it for a weekend when you're camping, but you're not going to do it when you're up here for weeks at a time or a majority of the time. You're not going to live out of a cooler or even them small coolers. They're, those are great for camping and traveling, but we did the small uh, portable refrigerators for a few months, and it's, I mean, they're just too small 
to live and to stay for any significant amount of time. So 170 watts, man. Worth every watt uh, and worth every penny. We've been running that thing for a year and a half, I think. So a year and a half of propane would be 350 bucks at least, you know, 400 bucks worth of propane or more. So it paid for itself by running it on solar. And uh, just to avoid any drama, we did use the generator occasionally last winter, like once every three or four days, we would have to boost up our uh, solar bank. Now, now last winter, we literally had a month and a half without sunshine. It was insane. I think it was like something on record of the longest streak with no sunshine. So I'm hoping our secondary array, so I'm hoping our secondary array that we installed this spring, we have been using it to charge power stations for portable power around the property. But I'm hoping that this extra two or 300 watts that we get out of that um, on cloudy days in combination with our couple hundred watts on cloudy days from our thousand watt panel can keep us in motion and keep us charging even in the dead of winter. You guys wanna come outside? So guys, let's ask the boss, have you felt like you were inconvenienced or that far off with the solar like is it a big deal no it's been good to us do we had to spend do, did we have to spend tens of thousands of dollars nope. to have electricity at our cabin nope and be comfortable nope do we even know we're on solar no no you wouldn't even know because it's not that you know we're used to it now we monitored it before we monitored it before, like every day, because I was just interested to see what, how it was working. But it's like we're on grid now. So that's awesome. Yep, we get lots of good power. And if you need less, you can cut your costs even more. You could probably cut the system in half if you're only doing it for a weekend getaway. Because this system will run for four days with no sunshine. And then it's only to like half dead where you're not supposed to like yeah. drain we've your batteries. We've gotten to that point. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten to that point. It's four in days. Winter, in the winter time, yeah. when last winter we had no sunlight literally yeah. for six weeks. So yeah. it would barely get charged. Yeah. We have 4,800 watt hours in those eight batteries. And so that means we use about 1,200 watts a day. Uh, and we can run, like I said, three, four days, no problem. And then hopefully the sunshine comes back out. But now that we have double the solar panels, we can get like a small trickle charge even on cloudy days. Mm -hmm. So guys, if there's anything I missed or you have questions, please ask them. Um, I don't have like a script for these videos to so make sure I can cover every single point. So if you have a question, please ask it in the comment section below and check out the description box. I'm gonna do my best to put all the links to all of our equipment here. Uh, I have zero complaints. Two years now off grid, uh it's really doing good for us it's an awesome system the inverter just kicked on the blower because i have the door open like a dum dum. but uh yeah it's our cabin pulls about 100 you know 50 to 100 watts just by sitting there with all the little things plugged in but it's pretty efficient mm -hmm. so uh, we're happy we did this it makes the land and the cabin more affordable when you could get off the beaten path and go off grid so i suggest you try it and uh, do some research and ask us questions i'm happy to help i try to answer every comment on my videos especially ones like this so so we'll see you guys in the next one appreciate your time hope you have a great day thanks for tuning in all right